And hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Sim Games TO. And I am your host, Tony, and we are going to be continuing our build of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Uh, welcome to all of the viewers on Twitch. Much appreciated to have you along. And last time we were just working on making the East Danforth District, which looks like it's populated pretty well and pretty nicely. So now we're going to start uh, filling up this uh, part of the city over here down to the south uh, to make it more whole and looking better. So let's take a look here and see what we're going to do. Got everything set up correctly. Yes, looking good. So let's take a look and see if this area has a name that we can call it. Is there a district that we can call it? It's called the Beaches District. Um, Beachwood Heights, and this is called the Beaches, Upper Beaches. So that is the Beaches District. So let me go ahead and start by putting painting in the uh, district area here for us. And let's just go like that up to there. And then across, that is um, Gerard Street, and right down to the lake shore of Lake Ontario over here. And down to there is such. There we go. Perfect. Okay, and that is going to be called The Beaches, a very popular place for us here in Toronto. There we go, just like that. So let's take a look and see how the roads go here. Um, this is uh, rather interesting, a little, little complicated, not too complicated, just a, just a little bit complicated. Um, I'm going to start over here. Uh, whoops, uh, where are we going? There we go. And I'm going to start it over here. And we are going to go, let me just flatten this area a little bit for us. Um, use the leveler tool. We flatten this all. Oh, a little too flat. Uh, I want to be careful. Make sure we do have that ridge for the beaches there. Okay. Let me just work on that. Leveling that out uh, a little bit so that the water can flow down in a more evenly way for us. Okay. There we go. All right. So. Uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started on uh, how the roads are going to go here. So we've, we're going to go use the bike lane road, the bike path, the, the two lane road with uh, uh, the two lane road with uh, bicycle lanes, and that the first road that we're going to work on here is called Lee. That's just going to be the third road because we're going to put these two roads in over here that come in this way. Uh, Teddy Radko, Mr. Teddy Radko, how are you? Teddy, Teddy, how are you? Oh my goodness, long time, so good to have you in. How is everything? How are you? Um, I'm going to put one road in here. It's a hell... <laughs> yes, it definitely is. Uh, okay. Um... And let's let's so let's go ahead and put this road in first. So that'll be uh, Belfair, so Norway Avenue, up here, uh, which I didn't put in last time for some odd reason. But we have Norway Avenue that comes up. Okay. Uh, but this goes all the way up to here, like that, fills into there. And then we have a second road that does the same thing, and that kind of sets the stage for where the third road is going to go. Actually, this goes just a little bit higher up to there. Okay, then we have the third row. So this is Lee Avenue. Uh, that comes up to, how far does Lee? Lee, Lee goes right into uh, Kingston Road there. And then it also comes all the way down and across. Um, let's come out here a little bit and see how far out it goes. Oh, it goes out quite a bit of a way. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. So that's mainstream. Okay, so it actually it actually comes all the way across. Um, I'm actually just going to take it to there for now. So let me bring it all the way down and uh, all the way across. I'm just going to bring it to there for now. 
Um, and that is going to be lead road. Um, and uh, uh, Teddy, you're going to have to help me out. What is ATS? Uh, I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to sound stupid asking, but I am curious nonetheless. Uh, so let's bring that into there. So that crosses over into there like that. Okay. So we've got those in. Um, and we've got another road called Norway Avenue that comes in from Elmer. Actually, it's going to come in from here now. ATS, Canadian Truck Civic. Oh, 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 right. oh, right. Okay, ATS. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Right. Canadian Truck Simulator. Doesn't Moose pay, play that all the time? Uh, that's what Moose plays, isn't it? Uh, here we go. And we're going to bring that into there, like that. And that is going to be Norway Avenue. Okay. So let me go ahead and name all of these. So this is going to be Lee Avenue. So we have uh, Lee Avenue. Lee Avenue, there. And then we're going to have Wheeler Avenue. Uh, yeah, Wheeler Avenue. Uh... Wheeler Avenue, and then we are going to have Bella Fair Avenue. Uh, Bell, Bella Fair Avenue, just like that. And then this is going to be Norway Avenue. Uh, Norway Avenue. No, uh, that's as close as uh, I think we're going to get the Sweden tonight. Um, and then after that, we have, well, Williamson, what do we got after that? Got, uh, yeah, so we got like this park, so we got the Glen Stewart Park that goes through, but that comes down a little bit, that's a little bit later on. So we have, um, Southwest Drive, so we have Glen Ames and Williamson Road. So this is going to be Glen Ames, that comes over here, just like that. So that's Glen Ames and Williamson, uh, I think it's Williamson Road. I'll double check that in a moment. Okay. So that is Southwest Drive, okay. So I do have this, this is a little bit off scale. Actually, uh, yeah, it's a bit off scale. But that's okay. I'm going to do some magic here to kind of fix that. So, okay. So we're going to have, uh, yeah. So we have Southwest Drive that comes down here. Uh, that connects to south, uh, Southwest, yes. Southwest. Actually, I'm going to bring it over just a little bit further. There we go. And there we go. Okay, and then we're going to have Southwest that comes in. Let me just name those. Uh, Southwest. Yeah. Okay, so Southwest Drive. I'll kind of start and we'll go over here, then over here, and over here. That'll be Southwest Drive. So, oh, no, Southwood Drive. Okay. So Southwood Drive. Let's put that in. Southwood Drive. And... Let's see. So, uh, Glen Ames Drive. Glen Ames Drive. What did I do? Okay, Glen Ames uh, Drive. Okay, and then over here, we are going to have um, Williamson Road. Williamson Road, just like that. And there we go. So that is done. Now, there is a road. There are a couple of roads that go into here. So we're going to put those in. Let's make them exact fit. There we go. One and two. And let me grab the names of those. So that is uh, 
Hambly Avenue. Over here. Hambly Avenue. And then over here, we are going to have uh, Winneva Avenue. Okay, so Winneva Avenue. There we go, just like that. And that is okay. So that is coming together. And then what else we are going to have? We're going to have this road here come across uh, called Long Crescent. And uh, it is a long crescent, literally. There we go. But I'm going to just go ahead and uh, name it. Oh, no, actually, I'll call it Long Crescent. There we go. So Long Crescent as such. Okay. So that's how that's coming together. Okay. Not bad, not bad. Okay. So let's take a look at the next road that'll come in here. Glen Stewart Crescent. And that pretty much uh, comes across. Okay. Maybe I should just not put in... I need South... Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, no, Glen Stewart Crescent. Yeah, we'll do Glen Stewart Crescent, okay. So Glen Stewart Crescent um, will come in here. Like that. And this kind of goes to here like that. There we go. Okay. Um... There's another road that goes in here. It doesn't have a name though, so we won't give it a name. Just like that. Okay. So, um, oh, let me get the name of this again. So that is Glen Stewart Avenue. Okay. Glen Stewart, Stewart uh, Avenue. And, uh, just like that, Glen Stewart Avenue. Okay. Um, and then we have, so, let's take a look at how this goes. Okay, so we have, ah, Withorp. Um, so I'm going to actually extend that. Should I extend that a little bit? Um, maybe I should. Okay, so let me just extend that road just a little bit down. So let me bring it to about there. There we go. It's going to give us a little more space. Now I just have to go through the process of renaming this. So that's Glenn Stewart, and that will come to there. Okay. And then we have uh, Winthorpe Road that comes in here. Okay. Not a problem. So that is Winthorpe Road. That comes down quite a bit. Okay. And, um, yes, okay, just like that. And then the next road is going to be Cavendish. It goes, comes across. over here. So that was going to be Cavendish. Oh, did I not connect it? No. There we go. All right. So there is that. And so we'll call that, well, that'll be the uh, Cavendish Street. Uh, Cavendish uh, Street. And um, I'm going to call this Glen Stewart Lane instead of Foggy Street. Uh, Glen Stewart Lane, since it doesn't. Oh, Stewart Lane. Stewart Lane, since it doesn't have a name. Uh, better than Foggy Street. Okay. Um, so Williamson Road kind of keeps going a little bit. We have. Um, so with our. Uh, Beaufort. 
Oh, okay, so let me just remove this little piece here. The little, This little piece of road will go. And then this will be called uh, Winthorpe Road. Let's go ahead and name that. So Winthorpe Road. And then there's another little windy road that comes in. So Beaufort Road. Uh, comes from Southwest Drive, so let's go ahead and put that in. Um, oh, okay, so it connects with the end of this, okay, and then it just goes down to there, uh, right. Okay, I see how this goes, okay, just like that. Okay, so that is Beaufort Road. Okay. So, uh, Beaufort Road. There we go. Okay. And let's see what will come next. So, Beaufort Road. Uh, then we have another road called um, Hammersmith Avenue. Uh, that comes from here. So, that's Hammersmith. comes into it like this. Okay. Actually, we have Glen Manor Road. We're going to put Glen Manor Road in. Okay. Then we have this road that comes in here. So that is Hammersmith Avenue. Okay. There we go. So Hammersmith Avenue. That's a little bit too close. Let me redo this. Let me do this one. Okay. Let's go ahead and try, try this again. There we go. That'll be better. So that's Hammersmith Avenue. Smith Avenue. And then we have this, which is called um, Glen Manor Drive. Glen Manor Drive. Okay. And then after that, we have Pine Crescent. Okay, but that runs a little bit differently. Okay, actually, I'm going to leave that. Um, Hammersmith, no, after Hammersmith, Glen Manor Drive. This is interesting how this goes. Glen, Glen Manor Drive. Oh, that's also okay, so drive. That's Glen Manor Drive West that comes in here. Okay, okay. There we go. That makes more sense now. So that'll be Glen Manor Drive West. So that's Glen Manor Drive West. Glen Manor Drive West. Okay. So that area is just about done. Uh, let me see up here. So what goes up inside here? Um, gee, uh, quite a bit. Uh, quite a few. Th oh, no, 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 not too much actually. So we have Norwood Road. We already got that in. So, let's take a look here. So that's Gerard. Ah, Glen Oak Drive. Um, Glen Oak Drive, okay. So I'm gonna, we're gonna make that a crescent that comes in here, the Glen Oak Drive Crescent. There we go, just like that. So that is the Glen Oak, um, Glen Oak Drive. Okay. And there's no connection to Kingston Road. Okay, that's fine. So Glen Oak, Glen Oak Drive, just like that. And that is fine. Um, let's see if I could. I don't think that I could put it. No, I don't have space for a road in there. That's fine. We'll, we'll live with it just the way it is. So now let's go ahead and do the beaches. At least this segment of it. Because it is uh, a rather larger area. So let's see what we've got next here. So these actually extend all the way down. Which is perfect. Let me use a straight line tool here. And let's bring those down to there. Let me go ahead and name them so we don't forget what they are. Hamby 
And then let's get the other one as well. That's whenever. Okay, there we go. Okay, perfect. And then we continue on. And Hammersmith. Um, Hammersmith, before Hammersmith. Uh, no, there's nothing before Hammersmith. So that just comes all the way straight down as well. And Scarborough Beach Boulevard. So we have Scarborough Beach Boulevard and Glen Manor Drive, which also comes down. And that's, uh, okay, so then we have McLean Avenue. McLean Avenue, uh, here, let me just get the right place for that. Mm, that comes to there. This also comes down, okay. So, let's go ahead and name these. So that's Hammersmith, that goes all the way straight down to there. Okay, and Glen Manor Drive West. And we also have Scarborough Beach Boulevard. So let's go ahead and name that. So that's Scarborough Beach uh, Boulevard. Just like that. Okay. And let's see um, McLean Avenue. There's McLean Avenue. Okay, and that last one is Balsam Avenue. So this is Balsam Avenue. Balsam Avenue. So that part is done. So right now the city is in demand of industrial zoning, um, which I will have no problem doing. We have made room. Oh, so, okay, those have not even filled yet. Um, I think that what we should maybe do is put in that residential area anyways. Let's put in some residential. Let's, let's fill that up with residential zoning. Just because I suspect that it actually wants more residents to live in this area. And the reason I think that is because it needs residents in this area so that people can move in there and then go to work there because that's kind of how this all works. Um, so let's go ahead and set up the area anyhow because, uh, well, we need to. So let's start by putting in city services, double check police department, it is fine. Fire coverage, uh, we will definitely need a couple fire stations in here. I will put one over here and I will put another one down inside here. And then let's go ahead and name these. So this is going to be called um, the Glen. The, uh, I'm going to call it the Lee Avenue Fire. You know something, Lee Avenue, Lee Avenue Fire. And you know what? I can just move it over to Lee Avenue, which is an interesting way to do things. Name it first, and then move it on the street. But that's what I just did. So let's go ahead and see what the other one is going to be called. So that is going to be called um, Queen and Glen Manor Fire. So Queen and Glen Manor Fire. Okay. All right, so that is done. So let's go ahead and put an EMS. And we'll put an EMS station in here. This is a very good location for it. It'll reach the entire district that we've just built right there. And let me switch that to random vehicles. We have the Toronto Asses for the fire trucks and for the ambulances. And so let's go ahead and call this the Williamson EMS. Williamson EMS, just like that. And there we go. That is done. So now let's take a look at what um, schools and parks will go in here. So there's a big park that goes in here. 
that I will put in here. So this road will actually not be here. In place of this road, we are actually going to have a huge park. So I'm going to take that out, and I'm going to actually put in a large park that is going to go in here. So that is the Glen Stewart Park, and it will literally just go up and down this entire stretch of area, uh, just like that, because that's a massive park that goes inside there, up and down. So this is called uh, Glen Stewart Park. Uh, Glen Stewart Park, uh, such, and we will turn our attention back to that uh, in, a, in a little moment. Uh, let's just take a look here first and see what schools are going to come in here. So let's see um, school, and let's do a search. Let's search this area. Oops. Uh, no. Let's go back. Just going to check Google Maps and see what it's going to tell me when I search this area to see what schools there are going to be in here because uh, we definitely need to be educating the sins of this community. And uh, no surprise, um, there are several schools. Um, so we have the Glen Ames uh, Public School. Um, that's a high school. We have a high school and a pub and a regular public school. So the high school and the public school will both go inside here. Um, so let's find buildings for both of those. So we have a high school here, 1100. That we could just go ahead and put in here nicely. There we go, just like that. And then we're going to find an elementary school with a bit of capacity. And uh, we're going to put that in there as well. So let me go ahead and... We'll put this school in. The capacity is a little bit larger, but this is good. I think this is going to be uh, a bit of a larger area. Seems like we've got quite a bit of residential zoning that is going to come in here. Um, so I think that's going to be fitting. So let's go ahead and name these. So this is going to be uh, the Glen Ames um, Secondary School. Glen Ames, whoops. Uh, Glen Ames Secondary School. And then over here, we are going to have the Williamson Public School. Willie, William, Williamson Public School. And look at that, it fell right onto William Street Road. And I didn't even notice that. But when you follow real life builds and you do it correctly, then that's how it should be. That the school should go exactly what, what right on the road that it's named after. Okay, so those are in, and so let's take a look. Um, so there's no other parks in this area. Um, the big park is going to be over here, so we're going to have to put in some extra entertainment in this area um, for the people. Let's do a luxury playground. I'm going to put a luxury playground here, just so that um, we can uh, have some entertainment. Oh, look at that. So this is a very. This is what I like about the. Luxury park, uh, lux uh, luxury playground asset. Uh, is entertainment is a hundred. It has a, covers a huge area. Look at the area that this thing covers. Uh, and how much is it costing the city? Forty dollars a week. It's an absolute bargain. Um, I'm not sure if it comes with the default game, but if it doesn't, you could definitely not the default, the vanilla game rather. Um, the vanilla version of uh, City Skylines. But if it doesn't, you could certainly get it from the uh, Steam Workshop, and I think that I may have gotten it from there. Um, I just don't remember because I've uh, downloaded uh, so many things from there. So, okay, so we've got that in, and let's start to, and we've got city services in. Um, so let's go ahead and start putting in the population. Let's, let, let's go ahead and start zoning the area and uh, getting some residents to start moving in. So we got all this. This is beaches. So this is really primarily residential. You'll see very little commercial areas um, in, in and around here. Although I will sneak some commercial in just because uh, we really should. Um, simply because um, people do need to work somewhere, shop and buy things, etc. So um, some commercial area doesn't hurt. But right now, industrial is what is in demand. So let me just check what kind of... Um, Industries would go would be best suited here. So that's forestry up there. Um, but we have 
agriculture down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the forestry and I am going to put agriculture. I'm going to make this an agricultural district. So let me just remove all these trees uh, from this area. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and paint it in as agriculture. And there we go. And then we're going to set up some agricultural industries inside here instead. Let me just go all the way to here. Okay. Good. So now I'm going to set up the beaches as an agricultural uh, industry specialization. So let me go here, select um, agriculture, and there we go. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and put in uh, some industrial zones, but these are not going to pollute the area because agricultural industries do not create pollution. I'm going to put these all along here, just like that. And that's the nice thing about using um, forestry or um, agriculture or slash farming industries is that they don't create pollution for residents. So um, you could put them right next, uh, right in, squeeze them right into residential zones without any any kind of concern whatsoever. The only drawback is that they uh, create some uh, road traffic, uh, noise pollution, uh, because uh, trucks do have to come and service them. Uh, but it doesn't hurt to have them in some places a little bit here and there. It's uh, better, more worth it than not in, in, in this case to put them into this area. Okay. So we got that there. Now we don't, I'm not really seeing too much residential development yet. I think uh, I will soon. So let's go ahead and work on this part. So we've got the upper beaches. Uh, that is a... I'm not sure if that's a park or... A, oh, okay. So that is... Wood. So that is Woodbine Beach, actually. Okay. So I'm going to extend Woodbine Beach a little bit here. So that we could put some entrances to these places. Actually, I'm going to extend Woodbine Beach all the way down here, as it is in real life, because the boardwalk runs all the way along um, in between the shoreline and those residential areas there along Lake Ontario. So I'm going to go ahead and just fill that in right now. Okay. So next. I am going to put in the side gates for this park, and this is going to be not. This is going to do several things for our city. Number one is it's going to increase the land value of these areas, um, which is what parks really often do uh, in the game. We we'll put one entrance there, one there. And we'll put some entrances along here as well. There we go. And I'm going to put the boardwalk in. Then the other thing, the other thing that it does is um, it allows sims to commute from one part of the city to the other using the pathways of the park, which I think is tremendously important. Um, okay, so that's not working out. Oh, there we go. There we go. Perfect. So it is a, a, a straight line in real life. And so these pathways essentially just allow sims to commute back and forth. And as you can see, if they get a... If we make entrances for them here and allow and uh, make the pathways connect all the way to this industrial area and uh, commercial area over here, and uh, plus we've got the Beach Trades uh, School here, they're able to walk back and forth between that area. So it decreases traffic and increases their uh, ability to uh, commute through the city. And last but not least, when you have more people going through your parks, you end up making more money off of your parks. So it serves all these purposes all at once. So there we go. Let's put that in together there. And let me just make one more path that way because we're going we're gonna to find something to fill that in with maybe later on. I don't want to leave it too empty looking. Oh, look at that. All the happy faces. That means we won a game. That means our stadium won a game. That's uh, good news for them. Good news for the Sims of Toronto. Okay, so we've got the Glen Stewart Park in. We've got some houses starting to develop in the area. And so next what I'm going to do is go ahead and put in the Glen Stewart Park. 
and I'm going to run it just all the way across here, uh, right through the middle because this is going to be a larger park, larger by dimension, because we're going to leave quite a bit of dimension, quite a bit of width there, rather, between the east and west side of the city. Okay. And so let's take a look here. Oh, so we've got um, industrial areas already starting to fill in here. So clearly they were really in demand. Um, and uh, over time, so we're, so will our residential area over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, make the uh, Glen Stewart Park. Let's start with a main gate that will go over here, just like that. And let's put the other main gate over... No, not another main gate. That's silly. Um, that's a small main gate, uh, small park main gate. We're going to use side gates from now on. So... Uh, we're going to make a small gate there, another one there. Then we'll have a few more that go along here that just allow people to access the park from different locations. And that's very important for for um, the Sims to be able to commute back and forth because that is uh, the idea. That's how we encourage the Sims to do that. So here we go. Let's bring that to there. And then bring it to there. And then let's curve it up into there. Okay, good. And I will curve this one around to there and there. And then into there. And this we will bring over here. And we'll bring another one that will just kind of come down this way. That people could also walk in there. Okay. And then we've got one more here that we're going to connect in there just like that okay so that's all connected up for this side anyways once we work on this side of the city we're going to be able to connect uh, that as well so we're going to um, then connect the park to the west side of um, the air uh, of the build there okay so that is done so now we've got that going what is the entertainment um, we are at a level of 210 already for entertainment. Um, interesting, we haven't even put anything into the park yet. But that's about to change, because we're going to actually make this uh, a level 5 park, or at least qualified for a level 5 park. Because in order to get to a level 5 park, what we need is an entertainment score of no less than 1120. So what we're going to do is we're going to put enough assets in here so that we can get up to that amount. So park info booth, uh, let's put that over here. Uh, rep park restrooms over here and park cafe over here then once we're up to one once we have an enter entertainment score of 1120 all we have to do is wait for enough people to come into the park um, for it to level up and our job is done yeah, let's put another one over here very nice okay so let's see where that brings us to. So 1225, we are far past the required entertainment score of 1120 for this to become a level five park. Let's go to policies, turn on celebrate and night tours. Those are just my personal favorites. Um, just my preference. Uh, no rhyme or reason. I like watching the, uh, I, I like having it be a 24 hour park and I like having, seeing fireworks. So that's just why. Um, okay, so that is pretty much set up, and the schools are in, and all of that is done there. So, we have the boardwalk here, that's all connected, um, I will leave that pathway, that's okay, that's no big deal. Now, let's take a quick look at the schools here, so the Beach Trade, is, trade School has, uh, 1,400 students out of 1,800 required to be level five but we don't meet the attractiveness there either so you know what I'm gonna do though I would like to go up to our Bayview campus and I'll look at this campus and we can see that over here this is a star four uh, university so we've got all that we meet all the requirements to become level five the only thing we don't meet is campus attractiveness. Now, having said that, that is going to be a mountain to climb because we have to literally get this 
we have to almost double the size of this university to get this to become level five. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go for it because I think that we can do it. So let me go ahead and see here. Let's extend the campus area up this way. We're going to probably need that. We're going to need all the help we can get to do this. Um, and I'm going to put in several things here. Um, a lot of things for attractiveness. And I'm going to start on this side over here. So we're going to put in some, we're going to start with a building over here on this side. And let's see where that's going to get us. So we have, um, take a look here. Let's open the menu for university. And that should just take us a few minutes to do. Uh, but I'm going to put pathways in between everything and keep it looking pretty. So let's go ahead and put this building wrong area type. Um, by wrong area type, I'm curious as to what it's really telling me. Um, so this, let me let me see here. So this is liberal arts. Okay, so okay, so <laughs> I forgot this is liberal arts. So we could only put liberal liberal arts stuff in here. Okay, so. Let me give this a try here. Let's see. Um, so we've got all the schools, right? So we've got school of everything. We have all three types of schools in there. Okay. So what I'm going to actually start with, I don't even know where to start, to be honest. Um, Liberal Arts Auditorium. Let me start with that over here. Um... And I'm going to put a road next to it because that's going to allow people to cross over in between the two. Okay. So that makes sense. Let me put liberal arts. So how much is this going to capacity 600? Yeah. Okay. Sure. No problem. Let's put that in there. Okay. And let's bring the road, the bike path around here to there, to there and to there. Okay. And that'll just allow people to cross over. So this is, uh, we'll call this the York University Circle. Circle. Okay, even though it's a rectangle or square. And uh, so that'll be that. And that'll just allow people to cross back and forth uh, ac across the street from these pathways. Okay, so now let's put everything else in. That's gonna that's gonna make things attractive. So we have uh, liberal arts math club. So we'll put that over here, and let's go ahead and put in the pathway next to it. Okay, there we go. And. Um, okay, so this over here, come to there, and to there, okay, and then let's put in the next featured thing, let's put in a liberal arts outdoor study, I will put that right over here, okay, and then liberal arts fountain, I'll put that over here, so you see the fountains and all these other smaller things that cost a lot of money to maintain and don't hold students or where you get your attractiveness points. And right now, that is what we are going for. Uh, Media Lab, no, that's not what I'm going for. That's not what I'm looking for. Dance Club, not sure if that's what I'm quite looking for. Um, the area is not too flat. You know what? Let me flatten this a little bit. There we go. Let me move this. Let's move this over here. And then let's go ahead and flatten this area here. A little bit more for us. Okay. It's maybe a little bit better. Marginally better. Okay. So let's go ahead and put this back there. Okay. And so where does this get us with the track? And it's probably nowhere. 1170, so not very far. So we got quite a bit of ways to go. Um, and what's the student capacity? So 7,900, well, you know what? We don't need to worry about capacity too much because capacity is something that we have lots of at this university. 
So let me go back and uh, see what else we can put in here. Um, let me actually get the roadway to come around. Uh, what could I put in here? What is this? Liberal Arts Study Hall. You know what? Let's put another one in here. That's fine. Then I will put a pathway around it. There we go. Just like that. That's what I wanted. And let's put a path around that. Okay. So that's looking nicer already. Let's get a path around this as well. There we go. Just like that. And then let's see what other things, nice things we could put in here. So Drama Club is a nice addition, I think. So let's go ahead and put the Drama Club in. And let's put the road around that as well. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh, there we go. Okay, so let me just fix that up. I'm being very particular, but I want it to look nice. There we go. All right, so that is all set and done. Okay, so now where are we with attractiveness? 1275, we have. It, it, the game really makes you work for this one. Um, there's no shortage of things that you have to put in for this to actually work. So what is this? Uh, Liberal Arts Gymnasium. I'm not sure we need that cafeteria. Um, sure, why not? Let's put it right over there. I hope that counts for scores. Yeah, it does. It does quite a bit. Okay. So next, uh, we have. Do we have any dormitories in here? I don't even think we have dormitories. I think that that's what we should put in here next, to, or, or some dormitories. So we really don't have too many of those. But that actually looks very nice. It looks. A lot better when you have the uh, paths in between. Okay, so let, let's put in a couple of uh, dormitories. Where are the dormitories? Uh, liberal, liberal Arts Dormitory, and we'll put one and uh, one. <laughs> okay, we won't seem to be able to fit. Oh, I can put another one over here. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there over here. There we go. And. Uh, so where does that get us to? Uh, $13.95, so not very much. We need to put in the smaller items that carry attractiveness. And those are not items that hold students, so I'm really barking up the wrong tree here. Um, liberal Arts Statue. We'll put one of those. We'll put one over here. And we will put... What else can we put in here? Academic statue, a second type. We'll put a second type over here. Okay. And then, what else have we got here? Book club. So we'll put a book club. And we will put a uh, liberal arts chess club over here. And liberal, liberal arts math club. Um, that I believe we're going to be able to sneak in here somehow. There we go. Not bad. Okay, so now let me get the roads uh, or pathways rather to connect all of these together. And let's, I'll pick the ones with the trees. It looks nicer, doesn't it? Okay. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit it in here. It's not really going to let me fit that in easily. Ah, so I'll let me fit that in over here. Okay, to there, to there, okay. Uh, those two will not let me fit so easily, okay. So let me just take this, move it over here, and let's take that and move it over here. And then maybe that will give me some space to, yeah, there we go, so there we go. Got that in, okay, then I will take this to here Bring it in. Okay, perfect. There we go. That's what I wanted. And we'll put that over here. Good. Okay. And so let's see now where that gets us with attractiveness score. 1795. Just about there. Um, so let me find one more building that I could put in here. What is the capacity of the school now? It is 9,500. Oh, we're going to have no problem making it to a level 5 university. So, 
Let me just pick one more item. Nope, wrong menu. There we go. University menu. And let's see where that's going to get. Let's see what I could put in here that would look nice. Liberal Arts Auditorium, way too big. Liberal Arts Lab, no, these are way too big. No, no, these are not a bookstore. Is that? How big is that? Hmm. You know what? Maybe I will go for that. Maybe I'll go for the bookstore. Let's put that in there. Okay. Well, it's not the nicest looking building to put there, but it'll do the trick. It definitely did the trick. So now we have an attractive the score of 1845. So now we just have to wait until the end of the academic year. And that's, it's pretty much automatic that it's going to level this up to a level five university. And it's going to make even more money than it's already making. And right now it's making, uh, well, let's check how much it's making. I won't do the math in my head. Uh, I'm just lazy. Um, so liberal arts, um, it's making 24,000. So it's the most profitable institution we have in the city. And mind you, I have always noticed this, that when you increase the attractiveness score of a uh, campus, it always um, gets uh, more people into the university or the, into the campus. So I always see the population jumping up. And when we just looked at it, we had 2,100 people. Uh, I think it was around 2,140, 2,150 people, uh, students that were enrolled in, at York University Baby Campus. And now, ever since we bumped the attractiveness score up to 1845 from 900, it's now jumped up to 2,600 students, or 25, just under 2,600 students. So I have noticed that the attractiveness um, score does really affect the enrollment uh, at campuses, which is just an interesting thing to know and point out. Okay, so let's take a look at how the area is developing. Okay, so it is growing. Uh, it, is, it is certainly growing. I think that maybe I should put some industrial on the other side here as well. Uh, let me use the marquee tool to put that in. I'll actually put industrial over here. And I always like to put all these industrials or commercials uh, areas, especially if they're in like a residential area, um, on the main road. Uh, just because that's where the trucks are going to come to service them and uh, it keeps them off of the small roads which is pretty typical by in, by design of a city so let's go ahead and put those in and let's uh, go ahead and zone some residential areas as well I think it's time to start filling in some more of those as we're going along here and so that'll be done and let me just zone all of this as well and of course as we get closer to the park the land value, um, the entertainment is going to be higher and the land value therefore will also be a bit higher. And we always see that people tend to gravitate towards moving into um, areas that have uh, higher entertainment scores and more entertainment. Um, so it definitely has cause and effect. There we go. And we'll just zone all those in as residential for now. I think that's just about enough for now. There we go, just like that. Okay. All right. So let me just put those in. And we'll just leave it at that for now. Um, I, you know what? I will just put in a few more industrial along here. That is what's in demand. Um, so that is what we're gonna supply uh, to keep growing the city. So let's check the population of the beaches. So we're up to five, only 565 people. So not too many just yet. I think we're going to have to give it some time. Um, the average land value, though, is $68 uh, square meter, so that is very good. Okay, and we'll just take a look at the city in general and see how it's going. I want to go take a look up at uh, Yorkdale and see how that area, that area is coming along. So we just the uh, so last time we did Lawrence Manor, and that seems to be going really good. Legit, good evening. <laughs> Legit, how are you tonight? So good to have you in on the stream tonight. How are you? And uh, what were you streaming this evening? Was it uh, Cities? And, of course, thank you very much uh, for the raid. Much appreciated. 
Um, and all of you Raiders uh, coming in, welcome into my stream. I'm Sim Games TO, uh, and my name is Tony. Um, you can call me that. And I stream City Skylines mainly. I do real world, real life uh, Canadian cities. And uh, today I am working on Toronto, Ontario, Canada, the summer build. And right now, that is just uh, a look at the city there. So it's pretty much uh, a one-to-one -one build, one-to-one-ish build. Um, there are some some gameplay uh, changes we make for game mechanics, obviously. But uh, other than that, it's uh, it's it's pretty much a one-to-one -one build of the city of Toronto in Canada. And uh, yeah, so that that is where we are right now. We were just actually upgrading our universe, our uh, Bayview Campus University up here at uh, Bayview at Eglinton um, to increase its, its attractiveness so that it can level up to become a level 5 uh, university. And uh, so I see legit you guys were playing Oxygen Oxygen Not Included. That is a fantastic game. I have watched you stream that game. I have not played it myself uh, just because I haven't jumped around to, uh, gotten around to really playing other games yet uh i stick to i stick to, to my games that i'm still trying to master i think but having said that uh, i do want I, I do really enjoy watching that um your streams of both uh, city skylines and oxygen are not included uh so on we go with our development of uh the city of toronto uh, so i am just looking for which part we are going to be working on next and I think that what I'm going to be doing, I have to take a look here and see which way I want to go because there's actually quite a bit uh, that we need to build up. And I think that one of those things is going to be the park here up at, um, you got the name of it, as the Taylor Creek Park. Okay.